a lot of people have moved away from dairy and there's got to be reasons why, whether it's um, the method, the style, or they just can't digest it or it doesn't agree with them and, and not healthy for them any longer. So do you, do you think if we went back 100 years that the idea that people had milk intolerance would would be very different based on the way cattle were grazed 100 years ago? Yeah, yes. we, we, we do tend to believe that. Um, we, we think that it's um, certainly the cow, uh, the cattle industry um, and, and the, the dairy cow itself has changed because we do have that corrupted gene, um, which we will call A1 in there that causes a lot of difficulty for a lot of people all around the world. And, and so we just don't know if that change happened a thousand years ago or more or less, right? Somewhere along the line, the cow changed, not, right. not, not, not our guts necessarily. However, you understand this really well. You, and by the way, thank you for teaching us about lectin. That, that, that was very helpful <laughs> for, for our family. Um, but a pleasure, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've got, you know, gluten intolerant people, and we now have extreme dairy intolerant people. And, and so we think of this protein problem in dairy somewhat akin to the gluten intolerance. Uh, you know, the wheats have changed and the, and the milk has changed. And, and then our, our, our lifestyles have changed. So our guts aren't maybe as healthy to handle this stuff where 100 years ago, to get back to your question, people weren't noticing intolerances. Right. They, they, they could handle it because they were rugged. They were growing up on farms. They were exposed to everything. And, and, and you know, we, we and have a different society. And now. they didn't have the stressors that they have now. Um, maybe A1 was already there a hundred years ago, but the other stressors weren't making their body um, susceptible to an A1 because they were healthy everywhere else. But now with all the multiple of stressors with modern food, then we're going to be, people are going to be more sensitive to everything. Per, Pearl Volita on Twitter asks, what would you recommend for people who are allergic to salicylates? There is a growing number of people who are allergic to aspirin. Well, it turns out that salicylates are in a lot of foods and you can find the list of salicylate containing foods uh, just on any website. But what I've found with my salicylate sensitive patients is that it's actually leaky gut that is contributing to their sensitivity. And when we seal their leaky gut, their sensitivities go away. One fun fact about salicylates is that there are potential anti-inflammatory compounds in fish oil, which are called resolvins but you have to have a tiny amount of salicylic acid salicylates to activate turning fish oil into resolvins. And without a small amount of these salicylates, you won't convert fish oil into resolvins. So that's why I like patients to consider taking white willow bark. I drink white willow bark tea as part of my tea regimen every day. Or an enteric coated baby aspirin, which will give you a microscopic dose of salicylic acid once it's absorbed. And, but more importantly, once you figure out fixing leaky gut, and that involves getting lectins out of your diet, most of these conditions resolve. And it's actually exciting to watch. Uh, you've mentioned adaptogens uh, multiple times, and for our uh, viewers and listeners, uh, they may have heard this word, maybe not. Um, tell us about what the heck an adaptogen is. So the easy way to think about an adaptogen is something that helps your body physically and mentally adapt to stress. So there's about 10 to 15 adaptogens in the world. And I like to think about them as the cream of the crop of superfoods. Um, there's, as I mentioned earlier, ashwagandha out of India, maca out of Peru, chaga, which, which grows in its wild forage. So I like to think even of chaga as like 
the the king of adaptogens, uh, not just the king of the fungi kingdom, uh, but they all have indigenous use. Uh, you know, in the case of chaga, the first reported or first discovered use is actually around Utsi the Iceman, which is the most well-preserved caveman dated 5000 BC. Uh, there's a museum in the Italian Swiss Alps border, like dedicated to Utsi the Iceman. And he was found frozen. And I think they dated his body to around 60 or 65 years old at that time, which is an incredible long time to live. And they found birch polypores around his neck and some chaga mushroom as well. So it just shows you our ancestors were using this stuff. So I don't really look at these things as something new. It's more of a rediscovery. Uh, is imposter syndrome the same as fake it until you make it? Absolutely. And I have learned, Dr. Gundry, from the hundreds of people I've interviewed, and most of them incredibly successful like you, just about everybody experiences imposter syndrome. It's just we don't talk about it. You know, we're not we're not telling our colleagues, you know, I'm really feeling out of my depth here. I'm feeling I, I don't feel so comfortable because this is new to me. We put on our mask, we suck it up and we do it. Yeah, it's funny after after my first book years ago, uh, where I talked about a few people with autoimmune disease going into remission or being cured by following my program and was almost incidental in the book uh, people started showing up in my office saying uh, what do you know about autoimmune disease and i go well i don't know anything about autoimmune disease but i know a lot about how the immune system works because i was a transplant immunologist as a surgeon so i know how to fool the immune system so if you want to play, uh, you know, no guarantees here because I, I don't know anything about this. But if you want to play, let's play. And now 80 percent of my practice is autoimmune disease. Uh, so you're right. You, know, you just but I, I think I learned early on, maybe the same way with you, if you're honest with people and say, before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Mm -hmm.